Well, hello everybody, Danny back from Deep South Homestead. I know we might have a little echo in here, guys, but um, it is like 100 degrees outside. And this building here I've built, uh, which y'all seen in my videos, it's a shed that I have. I now have it closed in completely. And it hasn't been painted yet, you can see behind me, but I do have the plywood on the walls and everything. And it is a lot cooler in here than it is outside. So, the acoustics in here, I hope is not too bad. Because if I open the door, the heat's just gonna rush in here on me. Um, so bear with me. Now, uh, the weather is just, God, it is unreal here, guys. We finally got two inches of rain. Um, it kept going around us, going around us. Everybody says, y'all getting rain, you're getting rain. No, it kept going around us, going around us. And finally yesterday, we got an inch uh, early in the morning. And then late, late in the evening, we got another inch, which gave us two inches in one day. And we were totally excited because I had just, uh, y'all seen me do the video about the sweet potato slips. I had just set those sweet potato slips out. And I had watered them once, and I told Wanda, I said, this is going to be a long road watering these sweet potato slips till they get going. And praise the Lord, it rained. Now, I think they're pretty much going to be okay. I checked them today, they were standing up pretty. So I think they're going to be all right. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have to worry too much. Now, the rest of the gardens, uh, we still got some tomatoes that's doing pretty good. No squash, few peas. Uh, field peas, um, watermelons, cantaloupes, things like that's doing pretty good. Don't, they're, they're not doing real bad. We uh, got peppers are doing fantastic. Eggplants are doing fantastic. Uh, the Danny corn is holding in there. I, guys, I've got three raccoons, a possum, and three armadillos and stuff is still hitting it at night. Not bad as it was, but I still got one more coon or a possum or something. And he is being really, really evasive, you know I mean? He's, he's not allowed, he, he doesn't get into traps, he doesn't do anything like that. He's a, he's a pretty smart one, let's put it that way. And the ones that I did catch in the trap, two of them I caught in the trap, which is simply by luck. We've tried everything in the world, you know. I mean, people go, well, try peanut butter, try marshmallows, try honey buns, try sardines, try, you name it. We tried all of it. Um, it, it nothing, they wanted that corn more than they wanted that. And that's been the problem all along. But anyway, we're, uh, we're moving forward, you know, in the heat now. Most of our stuff will be done early, early in the morning or at night. We don't do anything up here today except can. That's where uh, I help Miss Wanda. We're, we're, we're working with some uh, with pears and uh, I hear it start to rain. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but with pears and uh, figs and things to this nature, we're uh, you know, we're working with that right now. And now we're going to be working with peaches. Those of you who haven't watched this over on Patreon, we, we showed you, <laughs> guys, and today about Force Time, what it's about is about the debate over humanity. You know, I, I was really skeptical about humanity. I'm just not gonna lie to you. I mean, I really had lost most all hope in humanity. Because we, you know, we tried to help lots of people and we get burnt every time we do. So we just kind of like just give up on it. And, and I told Wanda, we always sit and talk about the debate over humanity. And I said, you know, people are just, used to people were just good. I mean, you could, you could work with people, you could help people, they were appreciative. People would call you, you know what I mean? We worked with each other. Uh, now it's just, I don't know, it's just not like that anymore. And uh, we were sitting at the house Saturday and the phone rang and Wanda didn't know who it was so she just handed it to me. 
And when I heard the voice on the other end, I said, I know that voice. And it was Mr. Jerry, a, a dear friend of mine from way back. And uh, he said, Danny, he said, uh, I got some peaches. Would you like to have some? He said, I guess come get all you want. And I'm thinking, that's a bold statement to make unless you've just got a lot of peaches, you know? And I told, I told him, I said, well, Mr. Jerry, uh, it was raining at the time and it was very, very hot. It was the middle of almost like 10, 10 30 in the morning. I told him, I said, can we come this afternoon and, and pick some? And uh, he said, well, I'll just go pick, you know, I'll go pick a few bushels and, and you can uh, come get you some. And I said, well, okay. I said, that's fine. And when I hung up, a little while later, I got to thinking, we were eating, and I got to thinking, I said, hey, this is Saturday evening. We do a live stream on Saturday night. I said, I can't wait till Saturday evening to go get these pieces. Uh, you know, because it's a drive to get there. So I called him back and I said, Mr. Jerry, I said, would it be all right if I come on now? Because it was a little after dinner. And uh, he said, come on, come right on. I said, I told one, I said, uh, so we, I told him, I said, okay, we'll come. And I told one, I said, it's going to be hot. I said, it's the middle of the day, it's hot. You know, we're under heated boundaries here. And so we hit the road and we took off and uh, we, we got over there. It took us a little while to get there, but we got there. And uh, he was outside waiting on us when we got there. And uh, I looked, and guys, I'm going to tell you what, my faith in humanity changed at that point. I mean, Mr. Jerry has an old-fashioned homestead. His family's been on this property, I don't even know how many years, it's just a long time. Uh, he told me when we began to talk about the peaches that, if I remember correctly, I was so astonished by everything I saw. I mean, I, I was like a kid in a candy store, you know, when I get to see an old homestead. Somebody who's really real, let's put it that way. And I saw all these, probably 50 peach trees. And he was telling me that these peaches had been in his family for like 60 years, if I'm not mistaken. It was around 60 years. The same peach had been in his family. And I looked out there, and there's all these trees of just hundreds and thousands, not hundreds, but thousands of peaches just hanging all over these trees. And starting to fall off on the ground and stuff, and, and I was just like, they were not bug riddled or anything. And he said, they ain't been sprayed. He said, these peaches, we don't spray them. You know, he said, now we have had in the past, had to use a fungicide on the leaves before the peaches got on, you know, after the peaches got on. He said, but other than that, he said, we, these have not been sprayed at all. And I'm, guys, I've walked through this orchard. He said, I want you to just walk through it first. And let's just look. And I walked through and I looked. I mean, I was, I felt like I was in the Garden of Eden. You know, I mean, all these big white peaches just hanging by the hundreds, you know. And as we walked, we got all the way to the other end of it. He said, just wherever you want to pick at, just pick what you want to pick, you know. And I said, well, I brought, I just reached to grab some buckets when we left because I didn't know what he had. They were stacked up in the high tunnel and we were in a hurry. And I grabbed a stack of buckets. We had three, five gallon buckets there, you know. And I said, well, I got three five-gallon buckets. And, and he said, well, let's fill them up. I mean, I didn't want to take more than what I should, you know. And as we began to pick, I heard this massive rainstorm coming. I mean, it wasn't no thunder and lightning. I could hear the rain hitting trees coming. I told Wanda, I said, we're going to have to hurry up and get back over here to this truck. I said, it is flooding. And Wanda looked at me and she said, I don't care. She says, I'm picking pieces in the rain. And he said, you know what? We haven't had no rain in so long. I don't blame you. And look, it flooded. And we all three, me, her, and Mr. Jerry, stood out in the rain, and we picked those peaches and got soaking wet. And those of you on Patreon saw what Wanda looked like, and I looked worse than that. And, uh, and Mr. Mr. Jerry showed me... Um, Sawtooth oaks, big old trees, uh, uh, chestnut trees, big old giant chestnut trees on the property there, and guys, uh, uh, pomegranates, uh, persimmons. 
I mean, the tame persimmons, the Japanese persimmons, and, and just pear trees, old-fashioned trees, you know, uh, stuff you just dream about. And when I wanted to talk to after she said, you know, I would rather go to a place like that than I had to anything else in the world. She said, I love that. His old home place and everything. She said, I just loved it. And the debate over humanity that one and I always have was kind of resolved a little bit after having been there. It, uh, it gave me faith that now, this is Jerry and me, we're, we're close to the same age. And uh, it gives me faith that, that people still want to live this lifestyle like Wanda and I live. Because it, it gets to a point sometimes, people, yeah, I know people do the best they can. Wanda and I, we don't hold a public job. I, have, I, I, I retired in 2013. I mean, I'm sorry, 2010. I retired in 2010. And uh, I just said, I'm not fighting this rat race anymore. I don't care if I don't have any money at all. I'm just not going to do it. And uh, some people can't do that, you know. Some people just can't do it. Uh, they got to, they got to be able to go. they got to be able to do this and to do that. And I was just fed up with working my whole life. You know, I, I've always worked for myself, except for one time I told y'all I worked for a Chevrolet company. And uh, life has been a journey for me. And when Wanda and I got married, you know, we, we both wanted the same thing out of life. We both wanted to have an actual operating homestead. But the problem is, we were, where we live, nobody, Guys, we, we found nobody where we live down here in the South that actually lives the life that we live. And when we found Mr. when Mr. Jerry called and we got to go to his house, our hearts rejoiced. They really rejoiced. And I thank Mr. Mr. Jerry's the one who years ago gave me the y'all saw the video, I have a middle splitter that goes on the back of my cove tractor. Broken up the roast of potatoes. Mr. Jerry was gracious enough. He just brought that to my house one day when I wasn't even home and dropped it off and gave it to me. And I'm forever indebted to him for that. You know, and, and it... Sometimes I'm left speechless because of kindness of people. And it lets me know that the things that the Scripture says is really real. You know, he who has friends must show himself friendly. You know what I mean? And, and I think about, I think about the goodness about what the, what the Bible talks about, how that we're to help our fellow brother and sister in Christ. And Mr. Jerry never asks nothing. He just loves to help. And Wanda and I were the same way. We... We love to give to people, you know. Um, and, and even Mr. Chris had come and helps me. Uh, Mr. Chris brought us bucket loads of, uh, and I have five gallon buckets now, several full of lemons last year. And I mean, I was sitting there, I'm like, we're talking about lemons that were big as oranges, and these things were huge. And he said they just grow on my tree. They grow on my tree down in uh, down in the river swamp over there in Louisiana. And I'm like, wow. I said, what it must be like to walk outside and have a tree that's like 15, 20 feet tall and just nothing but limits. You know what I mean? But God's blessed them with that, and, and they're willing to share. You know, and, and like us, we have blueberry bushes. Like we got like close to 100 trees now, and. We have blueberries just falling off on the ground. We've given blueberries away, given blueberries away, take blueberries to people. I mean, we have blueberries in the freezer. And, and we've offered to, to just give, 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 you know. And, and, and the Lord just keeps, keeps giving back. And, and the thing about it is, Mr. Jerry told me, he said last year he only got one peach off all those trees because of the freeze. And, and then this year, there's thousands.
thousands of them. You know, we have to, when the Lord gives like that, is where we're to show our, our faith, our love toward our fellow brothers in Christ. And, and, and Mr. Jerry did that while I was there. Um, one and I were there. Another guy come driving up and got out of the car. I knew him because we both was in the construction business. I hadn't seen him in quite a few years, but we shook hands and had a little quite quick conversation. Uh, he was, you know, he needed to get out and pick peaches. I wasn't going to hold him up. And uh, it was good to see that Mr. Jerry had opened up and was giving good people. Now, not just people who he knew would not take advantage of him. He, he was giving people peaches to help them out. And you know, the Lord's going to bless Mr. Jerry for that. He's, he's, going, to, he's going to truly bless Mr. Jerry for that. I look at his homestead. His homestead is loaded this year with everything. I mean, every tree I looked at of his was utterly loaded with fruit. Uh, at Deep South this year, we're loaded with fruit. We have pears, we have figs, we have... Now last year, we didn't hardly get nothing. The freeze last year got most everything. And I told one, I said, when we got this year, I said, we need to be able to put up enough to make sure that um, that we're able to, to take it. If next year is like last year was, and we have nothing, then we have something to fall back on. And plus, we need to to bless some people with stuff. Now we've blessed several people. Um, Miss Sharon came one year over to Deep South, and uh, she got. <laughs> I think her family kind of got a little upset with her because she left with several five-gallon bucket pools of pears. And uh, after we, I mean, we could can several five-gallon buckets. She left with several five-gallon buckets, and we fed the animals five-gallon bucket fulls of pears. But uh, um, some years the Lord just blesses. And, and when I look around, I, I, see, I see so many people, they want to live a homesteading lifestyle. They really do. I believe in people's heart, they actually really do. But the old serpent has everybody caught up in this modern lifestyle of we got to go here. We got to go there. Uh, we we're involved in this. We're involved in that, and and we've gotten so caught up into living that kind of lifestyle that we don't know how to live any different. We don't know what it is to be still and know that I'm God, like He told us to. We can't be still. We don't know how because we're always got to be somewhere. And guys, it wasn't intended to be that way. It was intended for us to be able, if the Lord, let me, let me tell you this. I'll tell you a story. I had a pastor one time, very dear friend of mine, very dear friend. I think he's in Arkansas right now. He and I were driving down the road one day. We were talking. And he said, Brother, if the Lord called me right now to go to Africa and be a missionary, he said, I couldn't do it. And I was like, why? He said, I've been caught up in this world for so many years and I'm in debt. Even though I'm a pastor and I live in a uh, the parsonage, he said, I owe a lot of debts. From, you know, student loans, all kinds of stuff. I owe debts from different things. And he said, I couldn't go because I'm too deep in debt. And you know, that resonated with me then to hear a pastor tell me that he couldn't go if God called him because of his indebtedness. He said, I don't feel like I can fulfill what I need to fulfill because I'd be so deep in debt that I'd be a debtor, you know, and I would not, you know, a good man pays his debts. And I sit there and I said, wow, bro, I never thought about that. 
And I think a lot of us get caught up in that same boat. We, we believed the lie. I have some documents here. I have some uh, unclassified documents that uh, explains why we're in the situation we're in as a people in this nation because it's been a plan since the 1930s or 40s that this plan by the government was put into action and for us to get caught up in certain lifestyles so that we would be an indebter to the system and we think that it's natural when it wasn't natural our forefathers didn't live this way We've been brainwashed and programmed to live a specific way. And because of that, faith in humanity is just, we're, we're so caught up in having to pay our debts that we can't really be what Christ wants us to be. And as a result, if we can't be what Christ wants us to be, then we're not able to be the disciple he wants us to be here on this earth and it is so easy to get caught up in this indebtedness thing and not to be able to reach out and help everybody uh, that's the whole problem everybody has to have every dime they make just to make ends meet and guys it was never intended for us to work to have for ourselves. The Lord allowed us to work that we might have to bless others with. And that's why when Mr. Jerry did what he did, he didn't have to call me. He could, he could have called anybody. And I believe he will be blessed because he called a lot of people my understanding to come and get peaches before they fell off onto the ground. That is an act of kindness, an act of love. Uh, Christ told us before he left to go back to heaven to love one another as I love you. And the way that we can show that love is like in the scriptures where they were, the question was asked, um, they said, Lord, when have we, Lord, Lord, you know, when you give to, when you, when you give to, uh, to the poor, you, you help the poor, you do this, you do that. And the Lord says, you know, when you've done it to them, you've done it unto me. And the people was asking, when did we do these things for you, Lord? He said, when you've done it to the people, you did it to me. And when I sit back and I think about people who give, uh, there was a man one one point in his life he's a very wealthy man he helped me out I, uh, I had a wife sick with cancer and I needed a vehicle and this man stepped in when he didn't have to and he helped me now he didn't give me a vehicle but he helped me get where I could get a vehicle and Sometimes just knowing the, the right person, all it takes is just for them to say the right words to, to, to people, and you can, you can have stuff, you know. And this, this friend stepped in, and, and he made a way, and I think God led him into my life. He made a way for me to be able to purchase a new truck so I could get my wife back and forth to her treatments in a comfortable way because all I had was just a little single cab truck at the time. It was a new truck, but it was a single cab. And when she had her treatments, she had nowhere to lay down in afterwards because she'd be very, very sick. And he saw that one day um, when we was in the city where she was having her treatments. And actually, he was behind me and I didn't even know it. And the next day, he saw me and he asked me, he said, where was your wife at? I said, she was laying down with her head in my lap because she was so sick I was having to drive home and at that point he says you need another vehicle something she can lay down in and I said yeah but I can't right now you know and he said you're going to have it you know and, it's, and people like that the Lord raises people like that up 
to help other people. And those people are blessed because of that. You know, because he told me, so we choose one person a year, my wife and I do, who we can bless. And with this year, we choose you. And look, my jaw dropped because nobody ever has ever done anything for me hardly. I've always just had to fight to have whatever I wanted in life. And yet God raises up people. And once that happened to me, I said, Lord, I want to be that person too. I want to be the kind of person who can help other people. And, and as a result, now in my life, the Lord has fixed it so that I can help other people. And that, my friend, is what it's all about to live the life that we live here. The debate over humanity, how does it go? There's good people out there still. And the Lord is blessing these people. And if we pray and become one of those people ourselves, then God will bring the same people into our life. He will help us to find like-minded people also. And don't get caught up in the rat race of this world, people. Please don't get caught up in it. You probably saw the debate on TV the other night. And lots of people are leaning in one direction or the other direction now. Don't put your... Please don't put your trust in a human being. Put your trust in the Lord. And ask the Lord, who is the best person for the job in the future? I think if we do that, I think we will end up at least doing what the Lord wants us to do. I'm not going to say our country is going to be in any better shape because I don't believe it will. But I believe at least we will have done what's right. And look around you. There's always somebody that's in worse shape than you're in. And see if you can't help somebody. And watch the Lord show out. Watch Him do like it says in Malachi. Watch Him kick the windows of heaven open. And pour His blessings out upon you that you can't even contain them. And then don't lose your faith in humanity. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.